this is the ancient type of identity right of the great Dutch nation I feel it's going to be changed soon But yeah, we were quite pumped. Uh, the season wallet is something we've talked a lot uh, over, I think, ever since the beginning of Miller. And right now I have a prototype. Uh, we're showing this to the guys here, the Dutch government, we're showing this in other places, and try to make it a uh, reality. So yeah, quite tired, quite, but quite pumped, and yeah, let's hope for it. Uh, let's go. Hello, uh, I'm Vitor. Uh, I'm with the Pillar Project. We are a Swiss-based NGO, uh, and we are changing the way people interact with government services. We're bringing a personal dashboard for identity, and we're trying to make government services more inclusive, but make them more easy to find, find relevant services, and access the services when you need. We're trying to make the services more accessible by prevent by by providing. A flexible digital identity that they can use in many different ways. It can be used with a screen reader, it can be given in a remote location to a person with mobility issues. And especially, we're trying to empower users to understand the way their data is used by government and by business. Uh, how we're doing this is quite important. We're an open source project. Uh, we're open by we're open by design. We're collaborative by nature. We're building this on top of open standards. We're understanding the way personal data is held by government is subject to many different constraints. There are multiple agencies. There are legislative constraints. There are practical constraints. The way its data is handled. We are providing this uh, open standards so all these different agencies can work and talk between themselves then interoperate. Uh, Hi, I'm Ron with Pillar. Uh, our solution is focused on putting you, the citizen, in control of your digital identity and your personal data. Uh, but in order to do that effectively, your digital ID, you have to have confidence in your digital ID. Recent research by the uh, Long Finance Group out of London suggests there are three areas for identity authentication. They label it to be, to know, and to have. In this user context, you are a face that can be recognized. You know your DigiID login credentials, and you have a national ID card. So those are the things we're, gonna, we're using in our demonstration. Uh, the solution comprises three parts corresponding to the use cases that were presented in the challenge. The first being enrollment, and that consists of capturing the identity documents or identity information, and then to validate that, and at the end of the validation, to store a credential, a digital credential, in your personal storage area that you control. And then, once you have credentials, everyday use of the credentials is with online government and business services uh, to make it easy to interact using your wallet device. And then thirdly, if your device is stolen or lost somehow, the ability to restore that data and get it back to where it was initially. Let's jump into a demo to show you what we've done. process first and then the login process. So the pillar wallet is in production um, and it, it stores digital assets right now as well as connections to friends and contacts you may have. That's all secure with biometrics and pin codes in this case. So go ahead and enter your highly secure pin code. <laughs> we've done and what we'll show you there's a section called the me section 
and that is your profile and various things. What we've done for this hackathon is to put two other functions here, manage your identity, which is the enrollment process, and quick connect, which is the login function. So let's jump into manage your identity. There are many things that we would do under that, validating your email address, your phone number, but for this particular use case, we're gonna be doing identity validation. So in here, it's a list of documents that you have validated or can validate with various service providers that we've linked in. Um, in this case, we're going to be validating an ID card. So we'll click that. And with Pillar, in all the services where we go through an onboarding process, we make it very easy for people to understand what's going to be happening. In this case, we give a brief description that we're, we're needing your national ID card and we're going to go through a process. There's two check boxes there, one to accept the terms and conditions and the other one to accept the security explanation to be EIDAS compatible. Once you've understood that and accepted it, you'll click the button. The next thing that will happen is you will take your national ID card and scan the front of it. So make the light works. Get some light on it. There we go. Okay, and then turn it over and scan the back. The, the low light here is a little, a little tough. There we go. It will then show what it's captured, or a portion of what it's captured off there, and then you can proceed with the next step, which is capturing your face. In this case, we'll take a selfie of your face, and as part of that, there'll be a liveness check, so it's asking you to blink to make sure it's not a photo that you've put up there. And now once that is captured, then the next phase of it is, okay, so we've done the to be, we've done the to have, and now the to know is your DigiID login. So we ask for your credentials for DigiID. And how this you, is this you, is obviously mocked on the back yeah, end, just yeah. so. How do you assure the selfie is uh, voluntarily, so it's not forced? You could use something like time expressions or something like blink through time zero zero if like a security procedure. Uh, yeah, that's something you could do. It's a quite interesting idea. Okay, so once we've entered those, that's all the data we need. Now, once we hit the button here, we're going to go through a process to validate. Internal validations on device matching the photo with the biometrics on the facial recognition. Um, it shows a score of what we got on the uh, the facial recognition. Who is, who this, is this? No, it's not the moment. Because you're not a government, you're uh, a service provider who uses DigiD, which is not possible. We are a service, well, all we do is validate that, that that is a valid login, that you can log in through that service. Now, there might there might have to be some kind of legal things it's, around that. they are yeah. working in, in, uh, in the corners of the government. Okay. Yeah. And you break this into two pieces. No, no, we are I, 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 yeah. okay. So once you've done all that, then you have successfully enrolled. A credential is stored out in your wallet. That's then verified. So my, my picture you took to, is it staged on the phone or to a central server? My facial. It, it is staged on the phone. Staged on the phone. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. So now it shows that we've got the ID card valid. Okay. Okay, four minutes. Let's let's jump over to the quick connect so we can show the login feature and then we can get into more questions if that's okay. Where do you do the validation between the photo and ID? That's done on the phone on the and phone. then a further validation we assume will be done sending it up to a service so that you can validate that that photo was not forged that's on the ID card and you could do a further validation. Uh, different agents to cooperate so if you're spending a driver's license we expect the driving agency to be able to provide as they have the source of true, yes, this is the picture, you're talking to the right people. And we can do this from multiple sources. So the second part is the quick connect or the login to various services. So we've got a website over here um, that is set up as a, a mocked up government website that 
the user has the user the citizen has gone into and is ready to access this this site. So if we click the button that says log in, we'll get a QR code that we then use our wallet and click the quick connect button. It will bring up a camera so we can scan that QR code. And it senses that you need the following information. It's asking for first and last name. It shows what it would give you and you have to specifically give your consent to that. So once we go ahead and press the button that says accept, you'll notice the screen over here logs you in. Okay, so that's the no, no more need for passwords, usernames, things like that. Now, once you're done interacting with that particular service, you can now swipe this function here, and there's a log out button. So if I click log out here, you'll notice the screen logs you out. So you keep state of everything, everything you've connected to? Yes. And uh, I'll just talk about the restore. The restore is built into our, fun yeah. our function. It's, it's your typical digital yeah. wallet, and we don't have much time, so it, it's, it's out there. Um, yeah, okay. Especially this last thing is surprising to me. How do you, how do you manage that? You require every service provider to have uh, a piece of code that you write to keep this connection and to... There is a piece of code that, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, uh, it, it's a it's a web socket connection that you put a piece of code on that provides okay. this login functionality yeah. with the QR code. It senses when the device is connected and okay. it changes this, the sessions. Presentation. I thought it. Uh, I thought we were well ahead of schedule as we were going into the thing, and then you hear the beeps at the four minutes. It's like, oh, yeah. So we. I think we did a great job. We did. Um, I think as best we could. We've got a good product out there that we were able to develop in 48 hours, and it's awesome. Just finishing uh, the Odyssey Hackathon. Our team is now heading back to London. I'm still here to make some friends and meet some people that might want to help us integrate the Pillar Wallet and look for possible use cases. Uh, it's been great. We put the first uh, POC of the Citizen Wallet out there. We're probably going to look for a partner to integrate this before it goes into the wallet, but it's ready and ready for action. So we're actively seeking for partners to make this a reality. Uh, next hackathons, we have teams in, uh, have a, team, a mix of teams with people from the community and some of our team members, myself included, in uh, IF New York and probably be a presence at IF Berlin as well. If you're in one of these cities, just shout us a message, send me a message on the Pillar Wallet and I'll be glad to meet and talk. Uh, yeah, that's all I have for now. Keep on hacking. And if you like Pablo's mustache, please like this video. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.